Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're talking about the planar cut tool and we're working on a model of Batgirl. This is a bust piece. It's really not a bust because it goes below the waist, but it's considered a bust because it's not the complete character. Uh, it goes to about the mid thigh, so it's a pretty decent cut of the character, but she is considered a bust. Um, we're going to cut her off of her base and then we're going to hollow out both parts using the planar cut tool and then we're going to support them. So the whole point of this is really kind of expressing the way you can use this tool to remove parts from your model. In this case I'm removing the base because I hate having to print a base and a character at the same time. It really is annoying. I hate it. Can't stand it. So this tool, if you're not familiar with using any other type of tools to separate meshes, can separate the two areas and you can get as close as you can you're going to wind up with probably maybe a micron or two of uh, material that's going to form uh, from one piece or the other and in this case you're going to see a little bit of the leg is still left on the top of the base and that's okay so that should that should be fine we'll be able to use that and um, even if we lose that material or even if we have to sand that off completely She's going to look fine. No one's going to know any difference. It's it's a bust character anyway, so you're not expecting too much below the waist regardless. So we're going to align the pieces, and then we're going to do our hollowing material on this one uh, so to save some material here. We're going to uh, cut a square hollow hole in the uh, weirdly shaped diamond, and then we're going to put some round holes in the bottom of that girl. I don't have much concern. There's a little bit of a hollowing suction cupping issue that's probably going to happen with the back of her cape. I'm not going to bother blocking any of that. It's going to be a really short term kind of issue, so not too concerned. I think it'll be just fine. I'm not really worried about the amount of time that that's going to pull. It shouldn't really be too much of a pull either. So, what we're looking at is uh, generally just an open hollow do a uh, you know 1.7 maybe 1.6 uh, area and then a quality level of four as usual to make sure you get the best density area that you can with your hollowing and uh, we'll go ahead and try to speed up as much of this as possible because it takes forever sometimes All right, there we go with the hollowed parts. So we're going to go ahead and put the holes in. I'm going to put one hole in each one of the leg holes here, and we'll make them nice and decently sized. And that way we only have to put one hole in. If you put a decently sized hole, you don't have to worry about putting an aeration hole or anything like that. It's, if it's big enough, it's going to catch enough um, of a space there that you're going to have no problem with your print off of the plate. Now, as I said, on the diamond-shaped one, we're going to use a uh, cube-style uh, cutout. We're going to use the cube-style hole, and then I'm going to stretch that and turn it so the corners are kind of lined up there so I can kind of point one of the corners down at the corner there. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of line up that corner with a corner. So I can use that as the bottom point. And that's going to allow me to get a really good um, reduction and suction in the base. And since the base is such a light amount of material, it is prone to warping. And the weird shape, you know, the diamond shape, would be prone to warping too. So to prevent that, you really want to cut down on the amount of suction forces possible. And doing a, a hollowing like that with a hole punched right there in the center, that's a great way to do that. You have a very open area there in the middle that allows it to reduce most of the suction forces as it completes the print. And uh, yeah, 90% to 99% of that print should be really good and really easy. So your supporting should mostly be light. Uh, you can maybe put a few medium anchors, but I wouldn't even say it was necessary with the amount of light material that's going to be coming off of that.
All right, let's go ahead and export these models. We're going to um, bring them out as I like to do when I punch holes. I'll often export the models out of Lychee as an STL file, save them as an external file with the hollowing and the holes put in them. This honestly, for me, has been kind of a habit because um, when I initially started using Lychee and I started using the hollowing feature, when I would put a hole in something, there was that occasion that you would get uh, support. You know, you go to put a support in or something and it would fire right through the hole. And then you go to print it and then that support didn't catch anything at all because the hole made it not happen. So there's an issue with that. There's 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 an open issue there with the the way that it creates holes in in, the, in itself. So I prefer to either create the hollow models in another application, or to actually create them in Lychee and then bring them back in as the hollowed pieces with the holes already punched in them. And that way I have a model that I can work with. So here we are looking at the models with the islands already detected, and we're going to take a look at all the model uh, the island parts here. Um, and we're going to start adding supports to the different areas of the uh, models where we have islands first. Now, I'm not going to go technically crazy with the internal structure, but we are going to make sure that we just hit all the islands um, by assuring that we can add a light or sublight support to any of the islanded areas on the model. And we'll do that first and make sure that we don't miss anything by using the island support tool in Lychee, which is great. You should definitely make use of this tool. Uh, I oftentimes don't kind of attribute this enough. We do use this when we're trying to save time, and it does a good job most of the time. It will, it will catch the island and it will put a support right where it needs to be. Now in this big diamond shape piece, we're going to use our inlining system, which is going to be great. It's going to save a lot of time. We're going to be able to use that to create straight lines of support, and that's going to create them straight across. And uh, really easy to keep going with that. And you, like I said, the inline support system is great. It's a cool type saver. Um, we've actually demonstrated this in one of our other videos. All you do is place the initial support, and then when you uh, let go, you hold the shift button on your keyboard and then you're that's gonna place a, a row essentially and you should see the little dots form over the model uh, where that row is going to form so you will know beforehand based on the shift key you know based on you holding the shift key it will show you the lineup of where that is going to appear And once you're finished with setting up all of your supports on your base item or your preliminary item, whatever item you're working on first, whether it be the body or the base, set up your bracings. Make sure that's the last thing you do. That will ensure that the bracings connect themselves to all of the supports that you've created up until that point. Otherwise, if you go back in and create additional supports afterwards, they will not be braced in automatically. You'll have to run that tool again in order for the bracings to recreate themselves. Now on the body model itself, I'm going to use the support painter quite a lot. And you guys are going to see the way that I use this is actually quite interesting. Since we use a majority of the same support tip on everything, the same diameter, bar, etc., I don't really worry about changing up the actual um, style too much between areas. I have some preferences set there, but it's not really that strict, and honestly, it's fine. For the m most part, most of these supports are going to wind up being light once I use the support painter. 
Now the good news is, is that if I address the yellow zones as much as possible with the light supports and I pepper them in there as decently as I can, what will wind up happening is you're going to wind up getting a very light amount of damage wherever I put place with the supports because they're going to have a very small tip, it's going to have a very small breakaway, and you're going to be able to sand that off with the very lightest of sandpapers. This is a really great way to support stuff, and I have actually gone over this in a couple of my earlier videos um, covering my better support method where we discuss the different types of tips and styles that we use. The light tip is the best way to do a hollow body like this because she's very thin, she's not going to weigh too much, and it's not going to be too much to support her. So the way that I'm kind of using the support painter to support over the yellow zones and just paint them on, you're going to see creates a pretty decent looking support structure when I'm done. And um, there you go. And pretty much from here, we're just going to place some additional supports where we feel like they should be. We might use, you know, a couple, you know, little mini supports here and there. And then overall, what you're going to find is that, you know, you're going to have a really well supported character. Now, the other thing is because this is hollow, we do want to do the inside as well. So we will cover over that as well uh, once we finish up the outside of the model. Okay, if you're not familiar with it, there's a little slider on the right-hand side of Leechy that allows you to scroll up and down through the slices. Now, this appears when you, once you're in the Prepare tab or the Export tab up on the top there where you can kind of click through to those. Now, what you're going to want to do, if you already have a model that's hollowed out like mine and it has holes in it, punched in and everything, you're going to want to go ahead and just use this slider to go up and down and find the yellow zones inside of the model Try your best to angle the camera inside of the model, get inside of the model, and place some supports where those zones need those supports. If you do have the ability to, or if you trust Leechy's native hollowing system, you can use the hollow, uh, there's a hollow feature there that allows you to see the inside of the model, um, and it allows you to place supports. It's a little glitchy at times, and sometimes we'll try to place supports on the outside of the model, which is also one of the reasons why I switched to the way I hollow models currently. Um, so again, if you have a model that's already hollowed, this is a great way to go about placing supports on the inside. You can kind of scroll up layer by layer and see the areas that need to be supported the most. And as you get from to the top, obviously, you know, you, where you need them, obviously place them where they need to be. And this should help pretty much anything on the internal structure from building. But remember, 
The walls of the model itself will really help it build up. It doesn't need a lot of infill or support structure on the inside to make it work. In fact, on the contrary, it needs barely anything on the inside to make it work. The external structure itself should be enough to construct itself upwards. And again, make sure you place the bracings last. You definitely don't want to have to do that multiple times as it becomes a real pain to wait for that function to work. All right, we'll go ahead and export this one. And um, this one is going to probably take, I think, a few hours. But she's going to look pretty good when she's done. Now, this is a series of characters that we have worked on. We have a Batgirl. I believe I have a Batman. And we have another version of Batgirl as well, which is kind of interesting. I have a couple of other characters as well from that universe too, including a cool Superman bust. Uh, as well as a Martian Manhunter bus that we were looking at the other day. So we'll probably do some videos featuring some of those models as well. Now we don't necessarily have the rights to sell some of these guys, but these are ones that we really like and we like to feature them on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned something today. And again, we're really using more expressions from my supporting method, the tip and bar and diameter length, as well as the tip length and um, tip size are really all matter. When you're using both the support painter or the in inline support system, you really want to make sure that what you're using is going to be consistent with what you're printing. Now in this particular case, because we're printing a lot of hollow bodies, that means we're not working with a lot of weight. That means we can work with light supports in most cases, maybe a few mediums for an anchor here and there if we want to, but it's not necessary. So keep that in mind the next time that you have a big printing project. Don't hesitate to hollow it out. I know a lot of people worry about weeping and stuff like that, but as long as the holes that you create are large enough to drain all the fluid and clean it properly and cure the internal areas, you should be fine. So keep all that in mind. If you have any more questions about hollowing or anything like that, leave us a comment and let us know if you want to see more videos about hollowing itself. We would love to do more about it. But of course, we want to know if that's something you want to see. Anyway, guys, that's everything for this episode. Hope you learned something. Hope it was good for you. Click that subscribe button, hit that like, and click the bell if you want notifications. See you all soon.